Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Liz, and in today's video, we're gonna do one minute home hacks. If you have one of these orange juice containers, don't throw it out. You could actually use these to create little watering cans to water your plants. It's really easy to do. I'm gonna show you how to put it together. So you're going to need a drill for this and put a drill bit on your drill. The size really depends on how big you want the holes to be in the top of your lid. So what I'm gonna do is if you unscrew the lid, you can kind of see where the openings are. So I'm gonna put a few holes right here in the center portion where the S is. Now I'm just gonna brush off this extra right here. So now I have a watering can that I can store underneath my kitchen sink. Let me show you how I water my plants with this. This is definitely one of my favorite hacks. I love how compact it is. A lot of times watering cans can be really big and bulky. So I love this idea, plus you recycle a container. One of my favorite time-saving home hacks is my Yeedy vacuum. I wanna thank them for sponsoring today's video. The Yeedy vacuum has some awesome suction. I put it to the test. I added some crumbs to my floor and to see if the Yeedy vacuum could pick them up. Now it is going to take a few passes for it to get stubborn stains, but it definitely can get the job done. I love this oscillating mopping system that the Yeedy vacuum comes with. If you have any sort of stubborn stains like drinks or ketchup, the Yeedy vacuum is going to pick it up. Because Yeedy is a smart vacuum, it's going to avoid objects. It's also going to detect space underneath furniture. And if you have stairs or any kind of cliff, it's going to detect that and it's going to turn around so it doesn't fall off and break. You can put the Yeedy vacuum in a suction mode or a mopping mode. Yeedy will actually steer away from any carpeting or rugs you have whenever it's in mopping mode. Like how cool is that? You can put it on mopping mode and have all of your hardwoods mop and you don't have to worry about moving any of the carpeting or rugs. Yeedy also cleans in really neat rows. That way you know it's gonna pick up all the dirt that's on your floors. Yeedy comes with its own personal map, which is really great because you can control the device from your app. You can set up vacuuming in the app. You can also adjust water flow levels for different messes, and you can set up cleaning sequences as well. With your Yeedy vacuum, you can actually purchase separately the docking station. This is so great because the docking station actually sucks up all the dirt that's in your vacuum. You can just pull it out and throw it into your trash can. I was so surprised how much dirt this actually collected from my hardwoods after it did one pass on my main level. If you guys want to check out the Yeedy vacuum, I'll put all of the links down in the description box. Our next hack we're actually going to do in my living room. So over here in the corner, I have this gorgeous plant. It has a pot at the bottom. It also has this moss around the top and then it's a pretty plant. This is from Target, but you guys, this plant costs $150. And if you don't wanna spend $150, I'm gonna show you how to get this look for a lot less. Now this plant is actually from Ikea. It's around $50. I bought it probably a couple years ago, but you can see it doesn't have a nice pot with it, but it's a pretty plant and it's a good height. So what I bought to go along with it is a planter that I picked up from Dollar General. This was $14. You can see I still have the price on it. Now what's going to really set it over the edge is getting some moss. I bought this off of Amazon. I'll link it for you down in the description box. Along with anything in this video, you guys, including like what I'm wearing, all that stuff, it'll be in the description box. Let me show you how to put this together and make it look similar to the other plant that I have. 
All right, so I'm just gonna start by putting my plant into the planter. If you wanted your plant to sit up taller, you could do that as well. Just put some books or a rock base or something to hold it up higher. But I'm okay with it being at this level. Next, I'm going to get this foam moss. Now, let me show you what this looks like. I'm gonna take it out of the plastic. What's cool about this is it's foam moss and then it's on like a styrofoam sheet. So if you had a round planter, you could always cut it to fit in. This actually fits into my container perfectly, you guys. Like it's kind of crazy how well it fits. So what I'm gonna do is since I want this to sit in the center, I'm actually gonna cut a slit probably right here till I get to the middle. And then I'm gonna try to wrap it around my stem and then press it into my planter. So if all goes well, it should work out. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut to about right here. You can also use a knife to kind of cut through the back of it as well. Now that I have cut about halfway down, I'm gonna put it around the stem. So as I was starting to put this on there, it was damaging because it didn't want to get around the stem. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it completely in half and then I'm going to hot glue the sides together. So to do that, I'm just going to take my knife and just go all the way down to the bottom. Okay, so the next step, I'm just gonna cut like a little circle on the edge here so that both of these moss pieces will sit around my stem. All right, so now that we have everything cut in our opening, I'm gonna put them back into my container. That side is fitting really well. Let's see how I did over here. I'm just gonna try to match them back up as best as I can. And we may not even need to glue these together. So these fit really tight together. If yours were a little bit looser, you could always add glue here. Now you're probably thinking, okay, Liz, what are you gonna do with all this white foam? So I do have some little pieces that I cut off like that, that I'm gonna try to put back on here to make it look nice. I also have some Dollar Tree moss that I may add around the base here. So I'm gonna try to clean it up just a little bit. So this is covered up most of the area. Now I'm gonna add in some moss around the edge just so it looks intentional like I meant to have it there. So I'm just gonna push some moss in between here until I'm happy with the overall look of it. This next hack is a really cool safety tip. When you're nailing a nail into the wall, have you ever slipped and actually hit the hammer on your finger? It does not feel good. What you can do instead is get some chopsticks. Now with your chopsticks, you're gonna leave them together. Then you're just going to slip your nail into the center of your chopsticks. That way, when you're nailing it on the wall, you can keep your fingers at a safe distance while you put it in the wall. And then once the nail's in there, you just slide the chopsticks right off.
This next hack I saw on TikTok, I'm not really sure if it's gonna work, but I can't wait to try it out. And if you guys aren't already following me on TikTok, I have two accounts. One is my List Fenwick DIY account where I post all of my DIYs when we go shopping. So follow me there. The other one is called List Fenwick and I share with you all of my favorite Amazon finds. So make sure you follow me on both accounts. Now for this hack, you're gonna need any jar in your kitchen. I had this one. I just washed it out really quick. The first thing you're gonna do is just remove the label. All right, now this back label is a little bit harder to remove, so I'm gonna run some hot water on it just to kind of loosen up the glue underneath. Now here's where the actual hack comes in. Once you get the labels off the jar, a lot of times you're left with all that sticky residue on the front and the back. So you're going to need to get any kind of nail varnish and some cotton balls. And you're just gonna use that to take off the rest of the sticky residue. So it definitely works on that front label. Now I'm gonna try this back one that kind of looks crazy. Okay, so this side definitely doesn't want to come off as easily, but I do feel like it's removing it. It just takes a little bit of scrubbing on it. All right, I'm gonna get some more nail polish remover. It definitely is working. Now, it did take a little bit of scrubbing to get that white label off, first the one on the front. From there, you can rinse them out, you can use them to store items, you can also use them to display flowers or really just a bunch of different things around your house. I know there's products out there that take off labels, but this is typically something you have around your house. So if you're in a pinch, try it. Now to style this jar, I have some florals from Dollar Tree. I just bought these this spring, so you can still pick them up. I also found these lentils in my pantry. So I'm gonna use these kind of as like a rock base and I'm just gonna pour them at the bottom of my jar. I'm trying to use things that are around my house. I literally just went and grabbed these. Okay, so next I'm gonna put in the florals. Now with Dollar Tree florals and any florals, just kind of spread them out a little bit before you start sticking them in. That way they look fuller. Okay, so looking at this, I don't really like that you can see the stems. You guys will have to let me know if I should have left it this way, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to put some more items I had in my pantry. I think this is quinoa. And I'm just going to put a layer of this on top of my lentils. Then it's going to disguise my stems whenever I put them back in. All right, let me show you how I style this in my living room. If you guys like seeing home hack videos, make sure to give this video a thumbs up so I know to do more like it in the future. One of the things I find most annoying about using tape that's on a roll like this, this is actually some painter's tape, is every time I wanna use it, I have to fish the end of it out and like right there you can see how it just tore in half. I have a hack for you that's going to keep your tape ready to go all the time. So for this hack, you're gonna need some paper clips. These are from Dollar Tree, but you really only need one for this hack. This is super simple, but when you're done using your tape, instead of just pushing it down, you're going to take a paper clip and you're just going to put it on the end of your tape. That way, the next time you wanna use it, it's completely ready to go. You don't have to worry about pulling it up. This next hack is a really cool way to get your flour into your bowl. So you're going to need a whisk, which is probably what you're gonna be using to mix everything up anyways. So you're gonna take your whisk and stick it straight down into your flour. What this is going to do is actually load the flour up into your whisk so that when you pull it out, you have a bunch of flour and you can just put it into your bowl. Let's try that again. This is definitely a no mess way to transfer your flour to your bowl. 
here is a trash can hack that I think works really well in your bathroom. If you've ever worried about your trash can smelling, you wanna get some essential oils. You can use any that you like. This set I have linked down below. This has lasted me forever. So you want to pick out your favorite scent. I'm actually going to use the lemon and then you also need a cotton ball. You could probably use like anything, like a cotton pad as well. And I'm just gonna put a few drops of the essential oil onto my cotton ball. And then all you have to do is put this at the bottom of your trash can and then you'll put your bag on top. This is gonna help your trash stay smelling fresh. If you love DIY and home hack videos, make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Just hit that little red button. I post new videos on Mondays and Thursdays. One of my favorite kitchen hacks is hanging up my oven mitts. I love to put a command strip on the back of my cabinet. I've done this for years. And then most oven mitts come with a little handle on it. You can hang them on there. That way you don't have to waste any space in your drawers. So there's no need to buy a fancy trash can for your car. I think one of the best options is to get one of these style of containers. This one's actually from Ikea. You can buy them at Dollar Tree as well. You want a container that has one of these flip top lids on one side. So with this container, all I'm going to do is get a small trash bag and I'm gonna put it into my container. Then I'll just pull the outside. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so then I'm just gonna take the trash can, put it around the top, and then put the lid back on. You can put this in your car. Anytime you have any trash, you just throw it in there. If you don't have a fancy bag like this, you could always use a Dollar Tree sack as well. Put a few of your Dollar Tree sacks at the bottom. That way you always have a trash can and just pull it out whenever it gets full. Let me know in the comments if you're gonna try any of these home hacks. I love knowing your guys' opinion, and I'll talk to you in our next one. Bye.